Carolina on a full-time basis midway through last season. For the second time, because he had done it before. He's really such a great story. We'll get into it as this one goes on. Cortez was the starter for Carolina back in 2022, was relegated to third on the depth chart, pushed into action due to injury, and all he did was help lead Carolina to the national quarterfinals a season ago. He was not the starting goalkeeper when these two teams met in Johnson City last season. Third game of the year, a 2-1 Tar Heel win. In fact, it's the third straight year that these teams face off as Carolina has won in Chapel Hill in 22, as we mentioned in Johnson City a year ago. Tar Heels are in the white, ETSU is in the gold. Tar Heels last action, the 3-1 comeback victory against Florida International. Trailed it 1-0 through 73 minutes and reeled off three goals in less than four minutes. Earned that victory against the Panthers Thursday night. Ahmad Alquan with a high takeaway. Can't keep possession though. A chance for the Buccaneers to build. That was almost a very bad giveaway from the goalkeeper. Quack had that momentum taking him towards the sideline, just couldn't hold that ball. Otherwise, you've got numbers already in the box. Ahmad Alquan back in the starting lineup for North Carolina tonight. Came off the bench in the last action against FIU after starting the first two games of the season. Yeah, especially, we talked about it in the open, these, these games before you get into ACC play, but even in conference play, I feel like Carlos Samuano is the type of coach that in the first half of the year, you're going to see a lot of tinkering with different connections, combinations, so he can finally settle on who he likes best out there at the same time and what positions they're going to be. I think last season is a perfect example of that, Kyle, because his team was one that went 2-3-3 three, and three in ACC play. It was solid. They were probably comfortably in the NCAA tournament having to do nothing in the ACC tournament, but then went out, went on a run in the ACC tournament, getting all the way to the final, falling in PKs there, and then riding that wave of momentum all the way to the national quarterfinal. Something clicked in November. Well, and you can even go back to that COVID year. They ended up playing yep. a split schedule, and in the first half of the season, they weren't that great of a team. A lot of draws, weren't a lot of goals for them, but they started up the second half of the year and they were one of the best. And I don't remember what they did in the NCAA tournament, but I know they went on one of those late season runs. Got all the way to the College Cup. That was their last appearance. Fell to eventual national champion Marshall. This is Sam Williams on the ball, seven and white. Matthew Acosta transferred from Rutgers. Clock. Interplay with Charlie Harper. TSU settling back in the low block, now bringing some pressure out. That 10 and gold is Abdi Bahor, who we talked about off the top. Canadian freshman who holds Somali national team privileges. Riley Thomas, team captain, fifth year senior. He's part of that College Cup team in the spring of 2021. North Carolina, very disciplined team, possession oriented. Costa tries to send one into the box, but it falls right to Mark Kuwadio, senior from Montreal. He's been the starter every game for ETSU this year. It's going to be really important for him to help keep that back line together and keep that communication open because North Carolina is so patient. They'll look for that weakness. They'll switch like you saw there from one side of the field to the other to try and spread things out, get somebody out of position. Kawadio is one of the veterans. He's one of the nine players that saw time a season ago that returned to the CTSU program. A lot of young faces, a lot of transfers for a team that is just trying to find their way as a program under a first-year head coach. Alan Vital taking over as the head man in Johnson City this year. There's Coach Vital. Moving up from the Division II ranks, spent 27 years as a head coach, 14 at Carson Newman, 13 at his alma mater, Tusculum. Those are a couple of schools that are in that East Tennessee area. So he really has not left the northeast corner of the Volunteer State. Well, when, now, we, when we talked to him, it was very much about family. Yeah. He didn't want to surplant his family, move around like a lot of coaches do, and there's nothing against that. It just wasn't the way he wanted to go about it, so things kind of came together for him finally with the opportunity to move to the D1 level and it being the team that is pretty much the hometown team for him. Yeah, as he said, he doesn't have to uproot his family and that's really important to him. 
his son, JP, who just graduated from Tusculum, is now on his staff as an assistant. As he said, he gets to be the head coach at one of the premier soccer programs in the state of Tennessee. It's a real feel-good story for a coach who's had a lot of success at the Division II level. Shows that hard work does pay off. Switch play for the Tar Heels to Juan Cafaro. A couple of assists Thursday night against FIU. Charlie Harper. Kyle, as we watch this game unfold in the early minutes, it's pretty clear that ETSU is content to let Carolina possess it. They are defensive focused to start this one off. The only time I have seen them put any pressure on Carolina was near side. The horse seems to be a little bit of a floater for them, going between four in the back, five in the back, or he moves up into the midfield. But besides that, you're right. They're going to sit there. They're going to stay in their position force Carolina to, to settle for a shot instead of being able to get something in close. Saw Amato Kwok send it into the box. Martin Vichian was in an offside position. He moved back rather than make a play on it. But here's a high turnover. Luke Hilly with it. Drops it back. Williams takes a shot. Played over the bar. First quality chance for the Tar Heels. Tipped away off the foot of Williams, who scored his first career goal, Kyle, two years ago against ETSU. One thing you can't have if you're ETSU is turnovers deep in your own zone. Carolina will have the advantage, get numbers forward, and they're lucky that this one's able to be saved, but it does turn into a corner. You saw in the open, Vichian at 6-4 is a huge target on these set pieces. It is Cafaro standing over the ball for Carolina. In swinger, top of the six, Coadio plays it out, but not cleanly. Hilly, Luke Hilly, his first as a Tar Heel gives Carolina the lead. Been waiting for the NC State transfer to kind of have his coming out party here with the Tar Heels, an offensive weapon prior to coming to Carolina. Finally gets on the board here. Ball played well, it's a good read, but you've got to punch that out. Looked like he was coming with open hands, almost like he was caught between trying to catch it or punch it. And you've got to be decisive in those moments as a keeper if you're coming off your line. Fell fortuitously right to Luke Hilly, a Cary, North Carolina native. And as Kyle alluded to, he was the leading scorer a season ago for the NC State Wolfpack. Coaching change in Raleigh, Hilly hits the transfer portal. As we're starting to see in college sports, not just in soccer, folks can play for rivals a year after you know, playing for the team that, at least among fan bases, is that group you bitterly root against. Team Vichian keeping it up for Carolina. Vichian ahead for Hilly. Nice play back, but can't connect with Williams. That is wild to think about. You had told anybody in college sports, especially, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, that it would become you know, a little eyebrow raising, but nothing out of the ordinary to see someone going from Wolfpack Red to Carolina Blue, that that's something. I'll go five years ago, you told somebody that, and they're going to say to you, what are you talking about? In what world is that going to happen? But it, it has, and I can't remember the player's name, but Carolina had a soccer player who was on the team for three years, transferred to Duke. So it's not just that this transfer has happened from State and Carolina. Duke involved as well. You see Wake Forest. And I think with NIL as well as the transfer portal, you're seeing opportunities open up. And maybe what the fans think isn't quite what the players out there are always having between the ears. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's not quite a gecko singing about being a good neighbor on a commercial, but <laughs> it's close. Smart move to slow things up there. Andrew Check touching it back for Cafaro. Cafaro, such a playmaker when healthy. He's battled some injury through his Tar Heel career. Third season after transferring in from Barry University Division II School in Florida. It's tough to get into a flow and into a rhythm with an offense when you can't be out there consistently. All quack, top of the box, played away. Headed down by Acosta, and Check keeps it up. Acosta, all Big Ten selection at Rutgers. 
the other transfer starters in this lineup. Back out for Kufaro. Kufaro. Balls to Vichian. Vichian kicked away Kawadio. Nice play there by Mark Kawadio. And a handball on Carolina will result in possession for ETSU. More versatility from Vichian this time. Back to the goal, able to settle that ball, get some separation, and just, just a little bit too far for him to be able to put it away. But Carolina, you know the coaching staff's got to be happy. Ten minutes in, and they're really pushing on the offensive side. Well, there's a really good game story in the Daily Tar Heel, the student newspaper at UNC, after Thursday night's game against Florida International. And it talked about how Carlos Samuano gave a speech at halftime that game against FIU. And his message was that the team's energy was, quote, so flat for most of that game. Here's a chance for ETSU. Into the box, one on three. It was a difficult opportunity for Bahor. And Carolina is able to clear it out of danger, but ETSU, with their furthest progress up the field in the early going. Well, you got to take advantage of your opportunities when you have them, because it's going to be few and far between, I think, for ETSU. Turnover from Carolina, very unlike that defense, but it turns into a corner for you. Can you make it into something? So a corner for ETSU. This has been a strength for them early on. Fifth nationally, just under nine corners a game. Into space, still loose, blocked. And out it goes for another ETSU corner. I think that was Nordine who got the shot off on the loose ball. Sophomore out of Knoxville. Good line drive. It was flicked on. You saw it coming across the front of the, the screen there. That was Nico Cross. Flicked it, which kind of created a little bit of chaos there. Really good chance for Lucas Nordin, the former Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Tennessee, that ETSU able to keep home a couple years ago. Next corner, an in-swinger headed away, Riley Thomas. Second ball collected by the Buccaneers. Your ETSU here, yes, you didn't score on either of those corners, Kyle, but I think if you can sustain a little bit of possession, that's a positive for Coach Patal's team. Yeah, you got yourself a good opportunity there. You weren't able to capitalize, but keep that ball on this side of the field. Give your defense a break, but also see if you can't find a chink in that Carolina armor. The horn taking on Tate Johnson. A lot of physicality there. And Rashawn Clark, our center referee tonight. And that whistle is coming in because of this first move, able to get positioning. And once you have position, the defender, you're not going to really be able to do much. You can see Johnson coming in between the legs. Kyle, we talked about Bahor right off the top and his playmaking ability with the three assists in his college debut against Longwood. His pace has been impressive tonight for ETSU in the last couple minutes. Having that international experience, he's gone against some really good athletes, some good competition. So this shouldn't be a game that he's intimidated by at any means. And the U-17 Somali national team. Free kick will be taken by Gabriel Ramos. Preseason All-Southern Conference selection. Ranks in the top 10 in ETSU history for career goals. It's a low flat ball into the box. Charlie Harper able to get to it. And Carolina bangs it away. That wasn't what they were looking for. They wanted him to get underneath that, get some air so he could travel into the box. Just miss hit it. And it was last touched by ETSU. So Tate Johnson, the Florida freshman, to throw it in. Johnson miss hit, lofts it out of bounds. An advantageous throw for the Buccaneers now. But Alan Vital told us that this is a measuring stick game for his program. They're 1-1-1 one, one one on the year. This is by far on paper the toughest opponent that they've played so far. As he said, North Carolina is a national standard. They're one of the best programs in the country. And we're going to have to learn what it takes to compete with one of the best programs in the country. That's what he wants to see from his team tonight. Yeah, when you have a really young roster, I think that's a really great approach to, to say, hey, look, you're out there, you're getting experience. Understand what experience it is to be at that top level. You've seen what it takes to be able to compete with those kind of teams. And, and let's face it, the likelihood that ETSU is out there competing and in the mix for an at-large bid at the end of the year is very unlikely. So this game really doesn't hurt them in any way if they lose. Yeah, the 
path for them in the postseason through the SOCON. Kawadio way off his line. He goes down. Vichian is down. Near disaster for ETSU in the form of an open chance for Vichian. And now the focus turns to Mark Kawadio. Out so far, looked like he went trying to go with the header as Vichian came in with the shoulder. And you just hope everybody's okay. Looks like it got his arm, luckily, and not into the body where it would have been more of an impact. And Rashawn Clark is going to go over into the vicinity of the fourth official, Bradley Schrader. And they're going to have another look at this just to make sure that... Initially, yeah. it was that he whistled the foul against Vichian. It almost looked from that one look we saw there, Kyle, that Vichian was trying to pull up, that he yeah, was not I, trying to initiate that I contact. I thought live Vichian was going to get to that ball before Cuadillo. Man, that's such a bang-bang play there. And they're trying to see if the foul was initiated by Kawadio. It almost looks like Kawadio to borrow an American football term, dropped his head. Yeah, he led with the crown of his helmet. Yeah. Right, the football, yeah. So the reason that this is a big deal is because if it's turned uh, around and it's against ETSU, that's pretty deep for Carolina to have a free kick in an, in an area where Vichian can absolutely take a strike on goal. 100%. And Kawadio just getting his bearings about him. That would be a really, really dangerous Opportunity for the Tar Heels. Yeah, from Carolina, having seen some of the chances that Cuadio has taken early in this match, I'm more likely to, instead of taking an extra pass, put a shot on frame and see what happens. Maybe you get a rebound. And after the review, they're going to stick with the call on the field. The foul is on Martin Vichian. So Rashawn Clark and Bradley Schrader over there took a look at it. And perhaps ETSU catching a break here. Yeah, I think you, you can put that one either way. And when you're going with a replay, you stick with whatever the original call was. So play back in action. ETSU greeted immediately by the high pressure of Carolina. But to continue the point that you're making before that sequence, Kyle, the path to the postseason for ETSU is through the conference tournament. A year ago, they won the regular season title in the SOCON, were upset on PKs in the semifinals by Mercer, who will be here at Dorrance Field later in the month of September. And you know, they were left out of the NCAA tournament because some of the bigger games on their schedule a year ago. The North Carolinas, the Kentuckys of the world, they did not win. Pitchian, 1v1. Can he get the corner turned? He puts the ball back in play. All quack with space. Can't get it settled down. And Kafaro has to chase it. Oh, that was a real opportunity for the Tar Heels. One I think that all quack especially is going to want back. Yeah, definitely. He just couldn't settle that ball, and he had all sorts of time. It was a great effort from Vichian to keep it alive and get it back out to where it could be played. Here's Pahor again. He is quick, isn't he? Crossing ball on the overlapping run, played away. Take a look at this one back on the other end. The effort from Vichian to get to this and then redirect it back out top. And that first touch just took a weird spin on El Quak, and he just never could get a handle on it. That was out just inside the flag, so it resulted in a throw, and now here comes another one. Still very early, but a couple of chances for ETSU offensively. You've seen them attack the near side of the field, and I think that's a direct result because of the guy you've mentioned a couple times, Bahor, is positioned on this side of the field. side of the front line in the 4-3-3 formation for Alan Vital. You want a chance to pull the upset, especially on a road. Get the ball to your dynamic players as often as possible and let them see if they can make something happen. And 
take advantage of a mistake. That's what had Florida International 15 minutes away from an upset Thursday night. And granted, FIU is a very strong program for an NCAA tournament team, but still, they were the unranked team coming in here to Chapel Hill, and it was Michael Appiah who took advantage of two Carolina mistakes, one sequence off a free kick, and next thing you know, FIU's up 1-0. Kafaro. Carlos Samuano calls him playmaker. Not a surprise that he makes things happen for people like last week. Physical sequence. Sam Williams of Carolina. Eight and gold for ETSU is Louis Salkeld, sophomore from Newcastle, England. In. Flag goes up. He was offside. Give ETSU credit. They've settled this thing down after conceding the early goal within the first 10 minutes to Luke Hilly. They've possessed it a little bit better. Carolina's had their chances. But the Buccaneer defense has not conceded that second. And that's the key is keep possession. You, you want to take the team that's ahead and the aggressiveness that they have away. Don't allow them to have the ball on the offensive side of the field as much. TSU throw forthcoming. Sean Clark points to the spot where Enrique Cruz should insert it. Here's Ryan Suckling wearing the captain's armbands. First career goal off the corner in the 1-1 draw against Presbyterian Thursday. Bahor tackled away by Alquak. Harper, direct ball, Suckling's head is there. Kafaro with speed and space. Kafaro times his pass to Vichian. Out wide, all quack. Flag stays down. All quack, 1v1, taken down inside the box. And it's out for a Carolina corner. I actually thought that was going to be out off of El Quack in the goal kick. Thought it was some really solid defense in a situation where they had to have it. Yeah, I think that ball actually is off of El Quack. So Carolina getting one here. Second corner of the game for the Tar Heels. First, led to the one goal. Squanio was unable to clear it cleanly. It is Cafaro to take this one as well. Well past the far post and too strong for Riley Thomas. That's Enrique Cruz, who's the right back that races over there to win the ball. Bull mouth, see if Vichian or El Qua could get to it. And Kyle, ETSU has made an in-game tactical switch. Cruz, who was the right back, is now playing out at left back. And at right back for ETSU is the former left back, Hubert Derrigan, junior from Quebec City, Canada. And how's this for a wild bio nugget? He's a former member of the Quebec Provincial Acrobatic Ski Team for the U8 to U14 level. That's moguls, aerials, the stuff you see during the Winter Olympics. I think ski half pipe falls in there too. Coaches are looking for kids that participate in multiple sports and when you're going up to the the great white north that that includes a lot of winter sports there's some pretty good ski spots in east tennessee northwestern north carolina i'm gonna have to argue with you on that one being from the <laughs> northeast and somebody who was on a ski team there's some nice little hills to go look at the snow around here <laughs> You were on a ski team. I was. I was on a ski team in high school. I did the normal kind of skiing, you know, the, with, with the alpine. Gates and, yeah, 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 the yeah. slalom. Yes, giant slalom. <laughs> Didn't stick with it. I found southern weather much more agreeable and gave up the skiing long ago.
contact there, and this is going to be a booking. Sean Clark pulls the yellow card. And I believe that he's going to issue this on Carolina and Luke Hilly. So the goal scorer has a card to his name, too. Definitely came in late and led with the foot. Easy one for the ref to give the whistle and the card. And so Hilly, playing with a caution, will sit for the remainder of the first half. Here comes Patil Hansen. Very impressive. Yeah, very speedy. Danish freshman who scored his first collegiate goal against FIU Thursday night. That was the insurance goal after Vigian's brace. He's 6'1". He's got a big body for a freshman. Can handle the physicality of the game as well as having that burst of speed. Lucas Nordin gets off the cross. It was played well by Andrew Cordes as he jumped out into the channel preventing that ball from getting all the way through to Bahor who was streaking on. I like that ETSU switched fields. We just talked about how it's everything has been bottom of the screen. They've attacked the entire time on the bottom of the screen. Switch it up, find an opening up there, and then see if you can find Bahor in the box. Harper playing it back. Check. It's Gabriel Betancourt, North Carolinian from Charlotte. Six and gold, who won it. Here's Hansen. Here's that speed. Look at this. But Teal Hansen, can he time it up with Vichian? Cross was blocked and it'll flutter harmlessly to Kawadio. That was one that you could see developing. Hansen and Vichian with the hand signals just trying to time the cross up. And that's one first year playing together that as they get more time will become smoother. Here's Vichian again. Vichian, two defenders on him, and sails it well to the left of the post. Looked like it came off the outside of his foot. But immediately, Hansen into the game, and the offense has a spark. That's what you love to see if you're Carlos Samuano, someone who is young, who has the ability to come in and give your front line, a new dimension as legs tire throughout the game. Not nearly as hot tonight as it's been for the last couple of games for each of these teams. Both teams playing last Thursday, and it was well over 90 degrees both here in Chapel Hill for Carolina's home game in Johnson City for ETSU's home game. So temperatures in the low 80s certainly welcomed for these sides tonight. Vichian into space. Hansen racing there. Hansen wins it. Hansen, can he turn? No. Suckling says no. Gets the corner, though. And honestly, that might be the best thing for Carolina because there were four yellow jerseys back, and Hansen only had Vichian and uh, El Quack with him. So now you're able to get those numbers forward, stack the box. And it was a corner from that far flag that led to the one goal of this game. A little too much pre-kick action. Ref talking to Vichian for Carolina. Cruz for ETSU. Everything straightened out. Here's the service from Kafaro. First ball won by the Buccaneers, second by Acosta in Carolina. Williams sends it on. It's Riley Thomas who heads it for Alquak. He's got space, takes a bending shot that just misses. Oh, the trajectory was good from Alquak. A little bit too heavy outside the post. Yeah, Carolina had everything except for the finish on this one. I like the re-entry quickly. When you have numbers forward, El Quak just didn't have enough spin on it to get it back inside that far post. But a great look. And for El Quak, who's had some problems in the first few games of this season, sailing balls over the bar. That's a good sign to see if you're Carlos Simon or if you're a Carolina fan is 
for him to keep it low like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely agree. Hanson almost getting a turn over there in the box. Vichian will switch it out for Andrew Check. Hansen suckling tackles it back. ETSU gets something going on the counter. 1v1, Johnson and Bahor, a lot of physicality there. Betancourt, center of the park. Betancourt, well timed pass. Here's Bahor. Can he make magic happen? Buccaneers have an equalizer here. Bahor. Sends it back, and was one pass away. Charlie Harper out of danger. Now Vigia. Real good defense right there from Cross. Sophomore from Germany. So kind of freshman team pick a season ago. Long direct ball, Thomas. Go last touched by Carolina. And that defense from Cross, it didn't just stop Carolina from getting a counterattack, but it also allowed ETSU to immediately get possession and reinsert it back down into the attacking third. Something they've done a great job of. I'd say the first 10 minutes, Carolina had their way offensively. They were able to get that goal, but since then, ETS, uh, ETSU has done a really good job of keeping possession when they have it and making this much more of an even matchup. Saw a couple of new faces come in for ETSU, Kyle. Oliver Einarsson, freshman from Iceland. Also into the game, Jimmy Choi, a freshman from South Korea. Long into the box. Cortez plays it harmlessly. It's been interesting to see early in this season how coaches have adjusted to the new substitution rules where they're, they're now somewhat limited in what they can do versus the wild, wild west free for all that it had been. Hansen steps through a couple of defenders. He hits the gas pedal, sends it into the box, still free. Nico Kroos gets it out of there. Oh, it was one fortuitous bounce from a golden opportunity. This burst of speed, a little hesitation, got the corner, and he was off and running after he gets through these two defenders. Spark plug off the bench. You see that one look up, knew what he had. Played the ball pretty well. I got to give the credit to the goalkeeper there. Kuadio coming off his line to break it up. Otherwise, it's a 2-0 Carolina game. And Cordillo again! Is that Cafaro from the far side? It was. Yeah, with the left foot trying to go far post. A couple of really good chances for Carolina. It's the benefit of having an experienced veteran goalkeeper in there. Morrow will take this corner for the Tar Heels, trying to keep the pressure up, looking for the game's second goal. A lower, flatter corner. Harper, though, keeps possession. Acosta over it. Switched out, left flank. Loads of space for Kafaro, who took the corner. This ball, Vichian. Vichian's path impeded a little bit. Felt like the pressure, the intensity picked up there for a moment for Carolina. Well, the attackers, I think, at this point, there's three that I can see over at the scorer's table for the heels. Go ahead and empty the tank that you've got for this first half. You're going to see the bench, and you can regroup and refuel. But 
Seal Hansen. Was the ball out? It was not. Coadio leaps up. Doesn't take any chances with that bouncing ball. The impact Batil Hansen is making on the right flank for the Tar Heels. It's it is impressive. obvious. As soon as he came in, it's just a very different team offensively. Kyle, you alluded to the substitution rule changes. This is your first time parachuting into college soccer for the 2024 season. It's a rule change in men's Division I only. You see Hansen making this opportunity here for the Tar Heels. Good job by the defense there for ETSU to keep playing. Even though they wanted a whistle, thought it was over that end line, you got to keep playing until you hear the whistle. Previously, you were allowed to sub out in the second half and return once now when you leave the field in the second half. Again, this is men's division one only. You are done for the remainder of the day. So you can sub out once in the first half, return for the second half, but then once you are subbed out in half number two, your day is done. This kind of makes it more like the pro game and the international game. I think it's a positive. Yeah, I think it's a, a nice in between the two, right? You're dealing with college kids, more games, less time, so you can't quite go to that professional model. You need to be able to give them a rest and get some more legs in there. But at the same time, we were at a point where you could just sub people in every 10 minutes, and there were some teams that were. Among those Carolina substitutions, Verona, New Jersey junior Lucas Ross came in. First time this season that Lucas Ross has appeared as a Tar Heel. So a new face on the front line for Carlos Samuano's team. And how it speaks to what you were saying about tinkering with lineups in some of these early season non-conference games. And the fact that you're in game four, and this is the first time you see him, speaks a lot to Carlos really valuing the work that's put in in between games. It's not just about these 90 minutes, but what are you doing in practice? What are you doing in training to earn these minutes? Tate Lorenz has seen some action off the bench earlier on this year. Also coming on at that moment of substitution were Parker O'Farrell and Andres Cardenas. It's Gabriel Betancourt making his way over to the TSU bench. Trying to go over the top to Cardenas. Fended off well. Ross, the substitute. And Cardenas sends it out for an ETSU goal kick. Good pressure from the new front line for Carolina. You come in, you've only got 12 minutes till that halftime whistle. Go ahead and see if you can ratchet things up a little bit. Thomas racing back. Cortez, ooh, heavy contact there with Bahor. And the foul is committed by Bahor. This is one Bahor pulled up just a little bit too late. It's pretty clear to, to me that Cortez, and I think that's what the referee is saying, hey, look, it was pretty clear Cortez is going to get there first. You got to peel off earlier. But that's also the competitive spirit of the drive. Hey, I want to get that equalizer. I need to get to that ball. Right, as long as you don't do something so egregious you get yourself red carded and force your team to play with 10 men, I think if you're Alan Vital, you're going to live with that. Absolutely. You want to see your team competing. Yeah, and you could see at the very end, he tried to pull up and, and veer off a little bit. Ticking down toward 10 minutes to go in the opening half. Luke Hilly scored for Carolina. Seventh minute tally. Dorrance Field tonight. Easy one to whistle on Cruz. Big four on push in the back. Eighth all-time meeting between these two teams. Carolina leads the series 6-1. ETSU's lone win 
team in overtime back when that was a thing in the regular season against the then number one Tar Heels. 2016, Carolina would go to the College Cup that year. Here's Hansen. Hansen running parallel to the top of the box. O'Farrell couldn't touch it cleanly. O'Farrell steps through two defenders. Acosta now. Looks like with all the substitutions, ETSU has gone to a five-man back line. It's a good eye, Kyle. It's a 5-4-1. It looks like that they're playing now. The only man really at the top of the formation, Oliver Einarsson. I think that speaks to the depth of Carolina versus the depth of a smaller program like ETSU. You lose some of the attack that you put out there. You lose some of that talent. Now you're thinking in a mind frame of, Let's not give up another one before the half. Sub on for the Buccaneers. First time off the bench this season for the Tennessee Wesleyan graduate transfer and Dutch native, Dave Neinheisch. Neinheisch, 17 goals over the course of his career for Tennessee Wesleyan, using the last year of eligibility to be a Buccaneer. the substitute. Johnson beats Bahor to it in space. Will be an ETSU throw deep, though, and despite some chances for Carolina as this half has gone along, Kyle, this is still a one-goal game. One moment of brilliance for the Buccaneers, and we're level. Well, senior Coadio has made a couple of really nice saves to help keep this one at one nothing, and you need that when you're looking to pull an upset. Andres Cardenas Staying down for the Tar Heels. Check that. It's Matthew Acosta that's down. Five, not six. Challenge came in. Looked like he maybe stepped on his foot. Up the right side of the field. Check along one over the top, using the speed of Hansen. Hansen, curving, turning, dispossessed. Nice play, Gabriel Betancourt. Beautiful tackle. You know when you go to the airport and there's those conveyor belts? Ross takes it back for Carolina. Intrigued to see where this is going after this chance. Spins away for a throw. All right, Kyle. There's conveyor those belts. conveyor belt walkways that you can hop on. Oh, yeah, love those you a little things. bit yes. faster. Yes. Right? That's what Hansen <laughs> looks like he's running on, and everybody else is just on the normal ground, and yep. he's just zooming right by him. It's always a little disconcerting, right, when you get to the end of those, and then you step off and you have to go back to walking normally, right? It takes you about a couple steps to get your bearings back under you. Ross loses his footing, harmlessly rolls out for a goal kick. For ETSU. Yeah, it becomes a fun uh, distraction game for a two-year-old if you ever need it when you're in an airport. <laughs> Some more good pressure from the Carolina defense. Suckling. It's got to be such a cool moment for Suckling in that game against Presbyterian. Fifth season in college soccer. You've been a defensive anchor for years and embrace that role. Wind up with a goal. Perhaps another one for ETSU here. This is Bahor, a long distance shot. Cordez handles it. Still had some room. I, I would have liked to have seen him take another dribble or two, maybe even play that one out wide. Can't blame him that he at least got it on frame, but you don't even have numbers forward there. That, that's, that's a freshman mistake, I think. It's kind of the opposite of his aggressive play that led to the foul against Cordes in the previous chance. I'm sure that he's getting a little bit tired out there too, right? So he doesn't have that burst to be able to maybe push past that back line this time. Ross races in. Switch it around. Thomas for check. Heavy pass, CTSU wins it back. Neinheich sacrifices the body to win it. Here's Bahor again. 
plenty of space. Flag stays down, does not have help though, chased out onto the flank. Bohor fires off across. Still free, top of the box. It's Andrew Check that got it away to Lucas Ross, and he'll find the speeding Hansen. Here goes Batil Hansen, looking to double the lead. Hansen just wide. Oh, what a chance for the speedy freshman. Such a quick counterattack from Carolina. I mean, a great ball. He didn't have to change his line much at all. Right on pace. And a great strike, just a little too far. Check out this, this high. by less than a foot, Matt. This high pressure from Lucas Ross. And that's, I'm sure, part of the instruction for those subs that come in at that 10 to 15 minute mark. It's, look, you're going in there fresh. You've got guys that have been running for 30. I want a lot of pressure on them. See if you can force a mistake. Tired minds lead to the body making mistakes. Why sports, the underrated aspect is the mental game. There are five minutes left in this opening half. Shots at 10-4 Carolina, Luke Hilly, one of the Tar Heels, seven shots on goal. That's the, the one that sticks out to me. Ten shots is nice, but the fact that seven of them have been on frame. And if you were with Kyle and I for the California Baptist versus North Carolina game a week ago, Sunday night, Tar Heels had the ability to possess and fire off a bunch of shots in that game. The problem was putting shots on frame. The ratio. Nothing really threatened. Yeah, it, it was something along the lines of one in four, maybe, were on frame. And that number went way up against FIU on Thursday night. Carolina took 18 shots, 12 of them were on goal. And then tonight, 70% of the shots have been on goal. And that's something that you expect to get better as a year goes on. So no surprise that game one, there was the struggle, but it's been a point of emphasis, I'm sure, in practice and in talks prior to games, and it's gotten better every single time out. Johnson on the overlapping run, the freshman, two in white. Connections leading to quality chances, such a focus in practice for the Tar Heels last week. Cardenas for O'Farrell. O'Farrell has options. He chooses Johnson, the left wing, cross blocked, Carolina corner. Good work for Carolina. Quickly switching fields. Allowed him to get that pressure deep and earn the corner. As he should. You've got the advantage with the one nothing lead. Limit ETSU's chances before halftime. It's a good one. It's headed down, and it's in the back of the net. It's Charlie Harper. A second set piece goal on the evening is the first of the season and second of the career of the Australian. This is a big one for Carolina to get this close to halftime. Just a great ball. I mean, it was right to where Harper was. He didn't have to move much. Just shield that defender off. And great job redirecting it to a point where the keeper is not able to get to it. Three goals off corners in the last two games for the Tar Heels, Kyle. It's always nice to have the confidence that if you can just earn a set piece, you're giving your team a really good opportunity to score. And with some of the pieces offensively on this team for Carlos Samuano, I think that's where their bread and butter is going to be, is in those set pieces. Score them however you can, though. And you think about a Carolina team that had one goal over their first 
five plus halves of the season. And that one goal was not in the run of play. It was a PK. And now, over their last 60 minutes or so, end of the FIU game this first half here tonight, five goals, three of them on corners. Well, you said it. It all came after that halftime speech, that halftime talk that Carlos Samuano gave them. Sometimes, even this early in a season, that's what a player needs is their head coach to say, hey, let's get it together. We're not playing the way we should. Let's pick things up here. It's part attitude, part adjustments. He said that the team was very flat in that first half against FIU. Yeah, and I think part of it can be, and this every team deals with the same thing, but I think part of it can be that there's such a short lead up to the season mm -hmm. that it's kind of hard to right away just turn it on and you're in game mode. Or you can get up for the game, you know, the first week of the season when you're playing the first two games of your year. And this is also what something Carlos Amano said post game last week is that that second week is where you can start to worry because by that point almost a letdown. Yeah, you're back in class. You don't have the hype for the first game, but you also don't really have the hype for conference play because that's not a thing yet. Sam Williams out for Hansen. Good play made by the former skier, Hubert Derrigan. Final 10 seconds eight, of the half. Seven, Maybe one more chance. Six, five, four, three, Ross gets ahead on it. Coadio will handle it. North Carolina in front by a pair at the half as the Tar Heels strike for two. Season ago. North Carolina trying to stay unbeaten, 2-0-1 on the season. Not just men's soccer, but the entire athletic department for the five fall team sports. Still unbeaten for North Carolina, 14-0-1 combined. It's been a winning weekend here in Chapel Hill. Four of those five, I believe, are top 15, maybe even top 10 teams. And then you throw in a volleyball team with a lot of newcomers that really looked good on the opening weekend. A lot to be uh, happy for if you're a sports fan here in Chapel Hill. I was looking this up. The 14-0-1 the is the longest into an academic year without a defeat in this 21st century for Carolina Athletics. Pretty remarkable. Not all quack over the ball. Fringes the box. Matthew Acosta has options, returns it for Alquak. Alquak steps around a defender, tough angle, popped in the air, falls to Hilly. Derek Gohan got it out. Andrew Check wins it though for the Tar Heels. Carolina with some strong pressure right from the jump in half number two. Matt, we saw as that first half went on and subs came in late in the first half, ETSU kind of fell back into a, a five-back system, and it looks like they've gone back to using four backs. They've got to have some game plan to push forward, take some opportunities, having given up two in the first half. Second time this season, ETSU was trailed by a pair, Kyle. They also were down two against USC Upstate in their one defeat of the year. That one would finish with a 2 nothing scoreline. And I think if they finish this game at a 2 nothing final, Obviously, you're not happy because you don't win the game, but you can take some positives in a match that we talked about for a very young team. That's what they're looking for, things to build off of. Just nine players on the CTSU roster saw time on the field for the Buccaneers a season ago. 16 newcomers this year, 11 of them freshmen, including this man, the speedy Abdi Bahor. And ball is ushered out for a Carolina goal kick. Carolina defense does a good job playing as a unit. You're not just trying to beat one player, because if you do, somebody else is filling in right behind them. Pretty quiet night, all things considered, for Andrew Cordes. One save made so far. Sure, he's just fine with that. Quiet nights mean good things for your team. 18 of his last 19 starts. He's conceded one goal or fewer. He's hoping that runs to 19 of 20. So, his team's walking away with three points tonight. He's 
Kelly taken down. It'll be a free kick for Carolina to restart play deep along the sideline. You felt like it was a when, not an if. Hilly would get going offensively for Carolina, brought in as a transfer from NC State, leading scorer for the Wolfpack a year ago. And the Tar Heels had such success going to the portal last year, bringing in a trio of talented forwards, one of which, Martin Vigian, had two years of eligibility remaining. So all whistles out of place, and it's fans ducking down below. Yeah, and I think part of that, we, we alluded to it in the first half, the preseason, the lead up to the regular season, there's not a lot of it. So for a player that's coming in, you have some leeway in my mind to be able to mesh and kind of figure out what your role is on a team before you can really have the expectations of consistent production. Last year was Vichian, David Bersedo from Quinnipiac, and Quincy Herman, who end up tying for the team leading goals coming in from Seton Hall. To Kyle's point, the, the preseason in college soccer starts just two weeks before the start of games. You may get one to two preseason games. Some teams will try and squeeze three in there, but you also don't want to burn out legs before the regular season starts. Andrew Check, top of the six, headed down, and Carolina has a third. It's the man Hilly with a brace. Hilly did a great job on the back end of this one, making sure he buried it. But this was all Andrew Check on the near side. Used a little bit of a burst, and that got him just enough of a separation from uh, the defender there. And then just an absolute perfect ball. Back corner, two defenders there. Hilly's able to split them and get up higher. And a sliding celebration for Luke Hilly. His second career brace, first since August 30th, 2021, while playing for NC State against UNC Asheville. And how about Andrew Check coming up from the outside back spot? Kyle, you said it, he made that play happen. And he's a player who, you know, we, we haven't talked about him much, and that's kind of the way that his game will dictate is you're not going to hear his name because he does his job so well and then every once in a while he can help out on the offensive side of things as well. But in a Carlos Samuano system, if you've got an outside back that can make runs like that and get involved in the offense, go box to box and then some, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a, a winning team. That's a, a mentality of somebody who was a midfielder at one point too, right? You, you played in a position where you were consistently part of that attack. You're asked to play back right now, but you can still come up and help out. You can facilitate. Took Riley Thomas a second to realize he had won the ball back right there. And Rashawn Clark blows his whistle. Sulkhead jawing a little bit with, uh, I believe that's Riley Thomas for Carolina. Thomas and Louis Salkeld getting heated in conversation. And that's a, a simple one to, to decipher. The referee is telling him, I've heard enough. I don't want any more. Next time I hear it, you're getting a yellow. You bear Derrigan. Choi. Nice touch into space. By Narsen, 12 in gold, starting the second half. Played forward, but no one was there. pressure that Carolina is putting on ETSU right now in the midfield, making it really hard to build and get into the attacking third. Everything's got to be a one-touch pass, and as soon as one is off just a little bit, Carolina has possession back. And Kyle, these Tar Heels have come out to start the second half, already having a 2-0 lead, quickly adding to it, making it a 3-0 game, and the energy and intensity is there in half number two, even with a comfortable advantage. And you've got to like that for Carlos Samuano. And North Carolina is a top 10 team, right? They want to compete for a national championship, and the best teams have that ability to raise their game and find the energy, even though it may not be the big marquee matchup. 
And how about that? Carolina with three goals in back-to-back -back games for the first time since 2021. We're going to have a card come out here on ETSU. Race to the ball, and it wasn't a lot there, but it was after the ball was played out. Uh, you know what? It may have been from that angle. It looked like Bohor got the elbow, the arm up a little bit. And this play is going to go to VAR because of where that foul occurred, Kyle. It was on the opposite side of the field from us. For the naked eye, it looked like it was out of the box, but Rashawn Clark's going to go make sure. If he sees that that foul occurred in the box, it's a PK for the Tar Heels. Second time he's gone over there to take a look at something tonight. So let's see here. In or out? So ball is played out, but it's where that foul, because that right elbow you saw from Bohor, that's what I think is called. Where does that come in? It looks like both Daniel Lugo and Bohor, who made the contact, and Lugo starting the second half for the Tar Heels after not playing in the first 45. It looks like that contact occurs there, just inside the box, and they are going to determine that the contact was, in fact, outside the box. So, and I think that's right because that's what the call was. There correct. wasn't enough to say, hey, you know what, this is absolutely in the box, let's overturn it. They may have ended up there, but it was more as the, the contact continued, if you will. Still, though. This is a dangerous free kick for Carolina. About 18 yards away. Cafaro and Williams, two options for the Tar Heels. It's Williams. He'll bend it. And just sail it high. Carolina pleading for a touch. No touch. It will be a goal kick for ETSU. Quadio might be hurt. I like the call. Put a strike on frame if you can. If it goes in, great. Maybe you get a rebound. But the key to that is it's got to be on frame. And he just lifted that one a little bit too high. Seems as if there's some cramping there for Quadio. It's not a very hot night, but he has been very busy, though, since this one got underway. And as Guadio is tended to by his teammates, all of a sudden, ETSU is forced to warm up the backup goalkeeper. And you hope Guadio can continue. Yes, he's conceded three tonight, but... He's played well to prevent this from being even more lopsided. The referee just called the trainer onto the field. So the gloves are coming on over there in front of the UTSU bench for Will Bowers. You can there is see Bowers. The video trying to continually stretch it, and sometimes. I'm by no means a medical professional, but sometimes you can strain a calf or a muscle, and it almost feels like it's a cramp. Mm -hmm. Bowers, in-state product from Concord, North Carolina, you saw getting warmed up. The question is, how long will the referee give him before they say, hey, you need to get off the field or play? An ETSU team already dealing with some injuries. Zaid Idlibi, who has been a key member of the front line for the Buccaneers last couple of years, he left early with an injury on Thursday against Presbyterian. He has not played tonight.
into the training staff continues to tend to Kawadio. Let's see if we see, Kyle, anything that happened here. Came down kind of hard on that left leg, and then you see him immediately raise it up into the air. And typically that straight leg is a cramp, but it just seems like they can't get this one to go away. And Batal looking on. First year head coach of the Buccaneers wanted to see his team come here to Chapel Hill tonight to compete against one of the best in the nation. Understand what it takes to compete at this level. There have been some moments for his team tonight. Relatively even game after that first Carolina goal for the bulk of the first half before that late corner. I don't think they've played a bad game at no. all. They're a very young team. They're outmatched, and it's been kind of the story of the game is Carolina is deeper, a little more experienced, and because of that, they've been able to get more opportunities. They're going to make a change here, it looks like. And Kawadio will be done, and into the game comes the backup keeper, Will Bowers. Heel pressure here. They will especially try and test Bowers early and often as he comes off the bench cold. That's not a fun spot to be, Cal. <laughs> no, you know, you've got to be in a, a position where when you're on the bench, you've got to stay engaged so that when you come in in this situation, you're not shell shocked. You're able to, to kind of integrate yourself into the game right away and, and just keep things moving. Sure, it's a cool experience for him, though, being a, a North Carolina native. That was something Coach Patal mentioned in our pregame conversation, that you know, there were several North Carolinians on this roster. Has to be a cool moment for them to play here, and they'll play at Wake Forest later on this season. So two ACC road games in the state of North Carolina. Also in that moment of substitution, Parker O'Farrell stepped on for the Tar Heels, as you saw off the graphic. Long distance shot against Bowers, and it's in! An absolute laser! And Sam Williams with his first goal of the season is the Tar Heels' fourth of the night. I mean, what a strike this is from Williams. Defenders just backed off. He said, okay, let's go ahead and go top corner and buried this one. Can't blame the new goalkeeper. There's not much he's going to do there. Sam Williams now owns three career goals, Kyle. Two of them have come at Dorrance Field against ETSU, 2022 and now 2024. Have to relay that to the coaching staff. They can just tell them that's <laughs> who he's playing every time. Hey, you see that Duke blue? Yeah, yeah, that's actually gold. It's the ETSU <laughs> Buccaneers. We'll see how long Carlos keeps the starters out. I think this is probably an opportunity early in a year where it's your second game of a weekend to get some Imagine you'll get one more run from Vichy at some point in time. But to be honest with you, if Carolina scores another, we may not see Martin Vichy again tonight. Save those legs for Friday against St. John's, then ACC play after that. Exactly. That's, at least that's what my thinking is. And then the other side of that is you also, as Cafaro takes this one almost through the whole defense, you're also getting some, some players some experience, Absolutely. like some actual game time. And you never know when you're going to call on somebody because of an injury. Wine for Suckling. Suckling to Derrigon. By the way, in addition to skiing, Hubert Derrigon participated in gymnastics as a child as well. 
It's all over the board on the sports. At least acrobatic skiing and gymnastics, those share some tendencies. One's just on foam pads and the other's on moguls. Maybe he missed his calling as a pommel horse guy. <laughs> Ball too heavy for Lugo, trickles away, goal kick ETSU. This is where the Buccaneers have to be careful building from the back like this. And you saw in the, the first half, you'd see a lot of balls that were played over the top. They have been much more deliberate with trying to build through the midfield here in this second half. And I think that was a change in the locker room that was talked about. That's one of those aspects, Kyle, that in a game against an elite team like North Carolina for a young ETSU team to say, OK, if we can try and successfully build from the back against a team like this, it's only going to make us better in future non-conference games and into the SOCON portion of the year. That shot from Choi is well high. Yeah, if you look at it from the perspective of, hey, we're not counting goals, but how many times can we get into the final third and get a quality shot off? That was a quality shot. It wasn't hit very great, but it, the look is one that you want. You've got an open lane to the goal. Maybe you get it on frame, you get some rebound, or get lucky and put it in a, a good spot. But I think those are the kind of plays and opportunities that you're, you're tracking and you're keeping count of so that, like you said, when you're in the SOCON, hey, that's the part that was easy already because we did it against Carolina. There will be tests before they even get to the SOCOM. We told you they go to Winston-Salem, see Wake Forest later on the non-conference. They also go to Columbia to see South Carolina. So some really tough games. And then a really good UNCW team comes to Johnson City on Saturday. You know, the other thing that Coach Vitala is going to be able to see, you're down 4 nothing with over a half hour left to go. Who are the guys that are out there that are still pushing, still giving it their all, the ones who want to get better? As he said, I want to see my team compete. And those competitors that shine through are the ones who, as cliche as it sounds, they ignore the 4 nothing scoreline at That's this right. juncture. Betancourt, nice connection. Williams, he's been everywhere tonight. All quack. Good vision to find Kifaro. Tackled back by Cruz, but bounces to Lugo. Lugo to the box, he goes. Kifaro keeps it in. And it'll be a PK for the Tar Heels. Carolina was calling for it. Rashawn Clark played advantage for a moment. He'll determine that it is a handball in the box, and then a yellow card comes out. Cruz, his argument was a little bit over the line. I think that goes to the referee earlier, kind of having a conversation of, hey, heard enough talk. We're, we're done with it. He made the call, and that's what it is. They're going to go take a look at this one. And the what? So the defender comes in with a slide tackle here, and then that ball comes across. That's Io Io Sok, I believe. No, can't tell the number. Whatever the defender is, I think it hits his left hand as he's trying to play it across after he comes in with the slide tackle. It was Cruz there, 15 and gold, who received the yellow card. Yeah, it just popped up off of. Suckling, it looked like, and bounced into Cruz. And it looked, again, from the naked eye, like it was a handball. Yeah. And so I hesitated for a second there, thinking, okay, maybe that's a handball, bounced away. And presumably Rashawn Clark calling advantage for the Tar Heels in that circumstance. And then once it was clear that was, that was gone, the call was made pointing to the spot. And I think that's the right way to referee that one. Right. So our crew has got to look dialed up here. That should confirm our suspicions. So keep an eye on number four here, middle of the screen. He's the one who's going to slide tackle. And then he saw that ball cross. It almost looked like it caught him in the head, but the arm was up there. And 
Mr. Clark is done with his Maybe not. judgment or not. What do we see? No penalty. The hand was not extended. Meanwhile, Suckling, though, looks like he's yeah. worse for the wear after the slide tackle and trying to rub out a, a cramp or something in that leg. He can read the lips a little bit. He's pointing, saying, the ball hit me in the face. Yeah. It took a funky bounce. So it does seem, and, and that look that we saw there, it wasn't as high in the air of a bounce as I thought at first. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that the crew got this right. Let's see it from another angle. This is from more over top of the play. And you can see the ball hit him right in the right side of his face there. His hand is right behind it, which is why I think the referee and us in live time see that happen. The hand is there, and that's what your immediate thought is. You're going to have to make a sub for Suckling. First it was Kawadio, the starting keeper, and now Ryan Suckling. We'll see their nights come to an end for ETSU, and Looks like a bunch of subs going to come in here for Coach Vital. First jogging on, Gabriel Ramos, graduate student from Brazil. That's the preseason all SOCON pick re entering to finish the night. Jimmy Choi is done. Bradley Schrader, the fourth official over there, has whole slew of matters to get sorted out. There are three additional ETSU players waiting to sub in. 14. Looks like in the background he's still getting the substitutions from the coach. That's what the holdup is here. Pretty easy. Who's going in? They're just trying to figure <laughs> out who it is that's got to come off. Can't have more than 11 out there, guys. 21 is Matias Delellis, freshman from Ashburn, Virginia. 22, Morgan Marvik, freshman from Norway. This will be his collegiate debut. And then 14 is Noah Franks. And with Suckling going off, they also had to transfer the captain's armband. That'll go to Gabriel Ramos. So an extra layer to everything. There we go. Looks like they got it all straightened out. Opportunity for those new players that just came on to show their coach maybe something that they hadn't shown in practice that can earn them some, some more minutes. Three underclassmen, two freshmen, and a sophomore coming in for ETSU. As I said, with Marvick, it's the collegiate debut for former Norwegian junior national team player. U16 to U18 levels. And play resumes. About 32 minutes to go. So the Tariels have taken a more defensive formation in their 4 4 2. 
Williams being pursued. Also into the game there for ETSU a couple of moments ago was Shui Wharton, sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee. Wharton started last game. Williams a little worse for the wear for Carolina. Williams still seems a little bit banged up. As you wonder loud, Kyle, at what point might we see some of the deeper bench options for the Tar Heels come on? Yeah, and that's, that's honestly going to come down to the mindset for the coaching staff. Do you go to the bench? conversation we had about being able to save some minutes here or do you want to in these early season games without much of preseason keep them out there and continue the momentum that you've had now going back to the end of last game through today you can draw a dividing line at the 74th minute of the FIU game one goal all season prior to that point for the Tar Heels it was off a PK in the opener at UAB now since then since that 74th minute of the previous game, Carolina has put seven in the back of the net. They've scored three or more in consecutive games for the first time since 2021. And in that first half, we talked about how Carolina took 10 shots. Seven of them were on frame. They've continued that efficiency here in the second half. Bending ball into the box is headed out by Thomas. You know, soccer is not a game of numbers whatsoever, but taking that ratio of shots on goal to the total shots from California Baptist and progressing it on through FIU and now ETSU tonight, that is a tangible way of showing this offensive improvement for Carolina. It's plain as day. I would take every day of the week a game in which maybe I only have 14 shots, but 10 of them are quality on frame mm -hmm. like the Tar Heels have today versus 40 shots, but only four or five of them are on frame. Quantity over quality doesn't always work. In this instance, you want those quality opportunities. Because if you've taken 10 shots on goal out of 14 shots, it likely means that your buildup and your press and ability to win the ball back and all of that has been pretty good. Wharton lofts it forward. Cordes challenge to leap up, make the play. Easy one. He came in really late on that. Card comes out and shown to Oliver Einarsen, Icelandic freshman. Keeper's got to play on the ball. You can't come in. And thought this was pretty obvious as soon as the ball was played in that there was too much pace on it. That's why I said, as soon as there was contact, that's an easy one. Good aggressive play, though, from Cordes. this talk about the, the Tar Heel offense and how it seems to really be clicking of late. The defense just keeps on humming. You know, it, there's not a lot of talk about it because that's just what's expected from right. the Carlos Samuano team is that they are going to be really stingy defensively. If you can get one, you're in great position. Not often do you see more than one against them. It is the standard. Conceded multiple goals in a game just once since the start of last season. That was the 2-2 draw with Hofstra in the NCAA round of 16 last year where the Tar Heels advanced on PKs. Yeah, that's the uh, the thing I think that is the, the most astounding is that they only did it once. It came against Hofstra, but they played through the ACC. Right. And the ACC tournament all the way to the title game, and yet they still didn't have in any of those games multiple goals given up. And the Tar Heels went 2-3-3 three, three in the ACC last year and never gave up more than a goal. 
So then it only makes sense that once the offense got going a little bit come November in postseason time that they would go on a run like that. Oh, it took a hard ricochet off the body of Neinheish. And I think the philosophy obviously has paid off. It works for Carlos Samuano and his teams in the postseason. It's so hard to score that you've got to be able to limit the other team's ability because you're not going to have much. So if you can keep it low scoring, maybe even none, you're going to have a really good opportunity. Figure out the offensive side after that. Ramos wearing the captain's armband now. Gabriel Ramos, top 10 in ETSU history and career goals, top five in ETSU history and career assists. The reason why he was the team's lone representative on the preseason All-Southern Conference team this year. And for such a young roster, that's a, a veteran that not just on the field, but in the locker room, and practices, coaching staff's going to rely heavily on him. Well, the tall in year one is the head coach at ETSU after David Lilly was named head coach at UAB in the American. Following his coaching job of leading ETSU to the SOCON regular season title last year. David Lilly's head coaching debut in Birmingham came against the East Tar Heels. Carolina's 1 0 win there. Open up the season a couple of weeks ago. A sliding play by Charlie Harper to deny the through ball. Foul committed by Kroos, pushing the back of Lugo. Pretty easy call there. Here come the subs for Carolina, or some more subs, I should say. We had wondered aloud earlier in the broadcast, would we see Martin Vichian again tonight with a 4-0 scoreline? The answer is yes. He does come back on. Andres Cardenas returns as well. And first appearance of the night for Jamison Charles. Second time this season, the graduate student from Minneapolis steps onto the pitch for Carlos Samuano's team. Williams done, Cafaro done, Lugo done. Mateel Hansen also jumped in there for a fourth substitution. Sam Williams plays an awful lot for the Tar Heels. It's rare that he'll step off, <laughs> especially in the new substitution rules. But after his goal for the Tar Heels' fourth tally of the night. Don't forget the assist. And the assist, that's right. He deserves a little bit of a breather. Yeah, and you saw him get uh, tackled down here not too long ago and was a little bit gimpy until we got back into play. So just go ahead and get him out. Williams and Riley Thomas are arguably the heart and soul of this Carolina team. Especially a team that hangs its hat on the defensive ends. Right yeah, on cue. Definitely agree with that. There's Thomas. Alquok taken down, and that should be a cardable offense on Franks. TSU is lucky that the yellows don't pile up, except for individuals, because there's a lot of them out there. Just hip checked him here. I mean, stepped right across him. Late. receives the ball back. That was nice. <laughs> Halfway through this second half, North Carolina Tar Heels with a pair of goals in both the first and second halves of play. Up 
looking for a potential fifth on the night. Pitching was dispossessed. Thomas centers it back for Harper. It was Harper's first goal of the season. Pushed the lead to 2-0 right before halftime. And that really changed, really, the, the entire complex of this game, or the feel of it, because you went from, all right, one nothing early and then played 30 minutes at that score, and then to sneak one right before the half. Here's Hansen. Hansen took the feed from Tate Johnson. ETSU got enough gold jerseys back there just in time. Anderson needs to be careful. He does have one of the two yellows. That's right. Or excuse me, one of the three yellows for ETSU. Einerson playing on a caution, Franks playing on a caution, and Cruz as well. Fitchian uses that frame to get free, takes a rip wide to the post. Does such a good job of shielding those defenders whenever he can get the ball with his back to the goal. Sure, you love to see Vichian's scoring abilities if you're the Tar Heels with his three goals that were the first three goals of the season. But I think you're really happy to see other players up and down the team sheet get involved in the scoring, most notably Luke Hilly's brace tonight. Yeah, you know that Vichian can score, right? Ten goals last year to tie for the team lead. But where are you going to get some help from? Where else are you going to have production throughout the season? So to have it be three different guys scoring today, none of which had scored prior, it's extremely encouraging. Nice cross. Hansen, Vichian tried to head it on, pleaded for a foul call, none coming. being pursued. Oh, and went out. I was staying corrected, there was a ETSU foul, so free kick coming for the Tar Heels. Pretty far out from the goal, 35, 40 yards or so. Costell off the restart. Farrell. And that's out for a goal kick. So the Tar Heels lead it by four. Two of those goals coming from Luke Hilly, his first two goals of the season. What a way to kind of show yourself to the Chapel Hill faithful with a brace here. Seven minutes in, this one a nice rebound. He was right on the spot and buries it from the top of the 18. This one was a perfect header on a great cross from Andrew Check. Kelly with his first two of the season. Here's ETSU and Shewitt Wharton taking a shot from just outside of the box. Bucks were able to build it up. And Cordes made a sliding save. First counterattack I've seen in this second half that ETSU has gotten down into the attacking third and actually gotten a shot off. Five in gold. Transfer from Lipscomb, first year at ETSU. Yes, spotted for the foul. Derek on. And Bo Farrell. Ramos gets there. His cross. Signers and chips it on. Cortez leaps high. A little momentum here for ETSU. Back-to-back -back opportunities where they're able to get down there, get a ball played into the 18 this time. And you got your second shot on goal a little, little bit earlier. 
even though this night likely is going to belong to North Carolina, barring something absolutely unforeseen. If you're at TSU, you can find one here. One in the back of the net before the conclusion of this game. So you had another positive you're going to take away from tonight. I think that'd be huge if they could find a goal. I mean, we just talked about how stingy this Carolina defense is. If you can say, hey, look at the confidence booster that we scored against one of the best defenses in the country. You talk about offense is kind of stuck in neutral. ATSU season numbers don't really show that because they scored three in their season opener against Longwood. But since that opener, August 22nd, Again, this is assuming they don't score tonight. It'll be just one goal over the next three games and that came in the 1-1 draw against Presbyterian. That Presbyterian game, that was a tough draw to swallow for ETSU. They missed a PK in the first half. It was a chance to, to double that lead, make it 2-0. Presbyterian scored the equalizer in the 80th minute when the, the keeper, Kawadio, had made a save. Take a look back at this foul here. Alcock is ushered to the ground and pushed in the back. But save was made initially on that PK in the 80th minute. And then the rebound was tapped home. And that was the equalizer. And TSU, instead of going to 2 and 1 on the year, dropped to 1 1 1. Yeah, but that's a lesson, though, on a, mm -hmm. a young team. You get opportunities, you've got to capitalize, you've got to bury PKs. Long ball. Bowers grabs it. Will Bowers came in off the bench when Mark Kawadio was injured and could not continue. Harper holds off Einerson. Anderson was a little bit limited there in what he could do in that physical matchup. He's already playing with a caution tonight. All clock. Fortuitously falls to Delellis, Wharton right back to him. Another play between that duo. They're gone. To uh, SU need somebody to come over and help. They're fortunate that Dergon's able to get through that. Ramos flag stays down. Cortez handles it. Now I'm surprised the flag stayed down and he was able to get behind the defense. That was a great run there from Ramos. He had nobody within a couple of yards of him. That was just timed perfectly. You saw him stay flat, stay flat, and then came right towards the goal. Good positioning though from Cortez and because of the positioning, really cut down the options and the angle. But that's now three good opportunities for ETSU here in the last five or so minutes. Push that shot total up. Now 16-7 in favor of Carolina. All clock, dancing free. Now three gold jerseys around him has to wheel it out to Acosta. Charles picking and prodding. Nice connection, Acosta, Alquak. Carolina offensively, you're not going to see them be as aggressive. They'll continue to build and they'll find an opportunity to take a, a shot, but this is more about possession at this point in the game. Only end of a 4 0 scoreline for the Tar Heels. To make sure that they can finish this one off cleanly. Stay unbeaten, move to 3 0 1 on the season. Start to turn their attention towards St. John's, the Red Storm out of the Big East coming in Friday night. And then after that, ACC play. Now, men's soccer is not like women's soccer and some other sports where once you're into conference play, you're there for the duration. There are three more non-conference games interspersed in midweeks throughout the season. But an ACC opener is a big one on the road in Durham. Yeah, with it, with it being right around the corner, you, you better have everything figured out because there's not a lot of leeway in the ACC to on-field get stuff figured out. 
Well, I think he called that game last year when he was here in Chapel Hill. That was a wild game. Carolina won it 2-1. There was a red card involved. I think it was John Kerr, Duke's coach, red carded. That's right. Yeah. And I believe it was the first time uh -huh. had it ever happened to him. Whistled for the foul, just lowered the shoulder, trying to take that ball away. Nico Cruz beats ESU. Touch got away, lowered the shoulder to try and win positioning. It wasn't even the shoulder where the, the rough part was, it was as they went down to the ground. So Farrell and the Tar Heels snuff out the chance for the moment. From an ETSU perspective, we've talked about building for later in the season, competing at a high level as the big takeaways here tonight. This is the start of a road-heavy stretch for them. They do have UNCW at home on Saturday, but including tonight's game, it's the start of a run of five of six on the road of which three are some pretty big, big brand name teams in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Wake Forest. There are only six schools in the SOCON that play men's soccer, so they don't start league play until October 6th against VMI. They've got a little bit more time to figure mm -hmm. stuff out. <laughs> and I think if you ask Alan Vital, he'd probably say that's a good thing. Especially first year taking Absolutely. over a program, yeah. So many new faces. And I think they're going to go back. They're going to look at this one. And, I mean, you have the Sam Williams goal and the second one that was scored from Hilly that are technically in free play. But that was a cross. So it's kind of like a set piece. And that's where the difference has been. Carolina has been so much better in those set pieces and getting bodies in the box. First two goals this game scored on corners. Einerson staying on side. Einerson, Thomas racing back. 1v1 matchup, the Thomas will win. Really good recovery there from Thomas because it looked like ETSU was gonna have two people in behind that back line. It was Einerson on the right side, and then they had a runner on the left side too. Fijian, a late foul call. Well, Frank's already playing on a caution tonight. Possessed Cardenas. Hansen, he'll keep it in along the side. He's got space to run. But Teal Hansen turning the corner on Cruz, takes him down, and it's in the box. PK. That was in the box. This time, Rashawn Clark points to the spot. And Batil Hansen uses his speed and a step on Cruz to earn this PK, Kyle. Even this late in a game, Hansen has that extra gear, and you could see him getting around the corner. I think Cruz realized it and just laid out trying to get that tackle before it was in the box, but it was about a foot or two inside that white line. Tar Heels one for one on PKs this year. The one goal against UAB in the season opener, scored by the man at the spot, Martin Vichian. Thank 
Remember, this is the backup goalkeeper for ETSU, Will Bowers, the starter, Mark Coadio, I believe due to injury. Bitchy and ready. And buries his fourth goal of the year. Always thought with PKs, no messing around. Just go strike it and hit it hard. And that's exactly what he did. If he didn't, I think Bowers may have been able to make the save there. He guessed the right way. Even got a fingertip on it. Just enough pace on it that it gets to the back of the net. So Martin Vichy in fourth goal of the season. Every game in which Carolina has scored this year, he has scored. Tar Heels put five on the board here tonight. Several substitutions there after the goal. Lucas Ross, who debuted in the first half, is back out there. Also into the game, Carolina debut for John McDowell, sophomore from right here in Chapel Hill. His grandfather, John Lotz, was an assistant Carolina basketball coach under Dean Smith, 1965 to 1973, later a longtime athletic administrator. So a pretty deep family connection for John McDowell to the Carolina program. It's got to be special. screen the five goals for Carolina the 2021 opener certainly has been a while since the Tar Heels even as they've had team success over the last couple of years when that game was in a different world yeah there were no fans in the stands for those ones fresh out of COVID and just getting back into playing It is crazy to think how much has changed since then. So Lucas Ross in the game for the Tar Heels. John McDowell also. Martin Mai, freshman from Denmark, 37 in white, making his first collegiate appearance. Top right of your screen, just along where it says Dorrance Field along the wall. about the legendary Anson Dorrance retiring just before the season. A lot of people don't realize he was coaching when the women's program was created. He's coaching the men's team at the same exact time. He spent a decade coaching both programs. He was handpicked for the men's job by his college head coach here at Carolina. Great Marvin Allen, who was the founding father of Carolina men's soccer, if you will. I think maybe he saw something in Anson, and, and it was it was a good thing that he saw it. <laughs> Anson was coaching youth soccer, recreational soccer locally in Chapel Hill. And Marvin Allen you know, called Anson, and Anson told this story at his retirement press conference that you know, he thought that maybe Marvin was just calling him for his opinion on who might be a good candidate. And Marvin Allen said to Anson, no, no, I would like you to be the next head coach. And then when he started coaching the men's program, the women's club team was petitioning for varsity status. It was granted. Anson coached both teams. And then when the opportunity to coach the women's national team leading up to the 1991 World Cup presented itself, he Stepped aside as the men's head coach. Bernay 
Martinez banging a shot away there. But what a incredible career for Anson Dorrance across both the men's and women's soccer programs. Looks like Carlos gonna empty out the bench here. Go one more time and bring in a few players. More debuts to tell you about. Riley Berge, junior from Columbia, Maryland, making his Carolina debut. Haruya Iwasaki, graduate student from Tokyo, transfer out of Cal State Bakersfield, as well as Michael Dunn, freshman from Pleasant Hill, Oregon. So Berge, Dunn, and Iwasaki all making their college debuts, rather their Tar Heel debuts. Iwasaki has played at the Division I and the junior college level. Andrew Cortez, now the only Tar Heel that's played every minute of this one tonight. That was a smart play right there from Burge, the junior. Saw that his keeper was there, just shield that defender off. Fitchian heads it on for Ross. Just to tie a bow on this night from an ETSU standpoint. The scoreline is not going to be what the Buccaneers wanted, but Kyle had some both positives and very clear teaching points to take away from this one. Yeah, we talked about the teaching point, which I think the biggest thing they're going to talk about is those set pieces. Mm -hmm. Marking your defenders, a little more communication on them so that it's not teams getting multiple points off of them. But the positive is this. We've seen them throughout this entire match be able to get the ball consistently or fairly consistently into Carolina's territory. And they've created themselves a few opportunities where they've gotten some good shots off, two of them on frame where they forced uh, Cordes to actually make the save. So there's some stuff that they can definitely build on. Here's Mai, the freshman. They have slipped there. It's that time of night and the time of year where dew can become a factor. Yeah, temperatures are going to start dropping overnight, so it's mm -hmm. definitely getting wet out there. Carolina will have a free kick just outside the box, waning moments of this game. There was also a lot of rain yesterday and earlier today, so I'm sure that that turf is soft. The women's game played here yesterday against Seton Hall at a very long halftime, a halftime of about 90 minutes due to that inclement weather. Duke and NC State had to cancel women's games that were scheduled for yesterday. ETSU's women's game on the road at Kennesaw State was also a no contest yesterday. John McDowell, Martin Vichian standing over the ball for the Tar Heels. Does this night have a sixth goal for Carolina? Vichian will take it directly, and it's a brace for Martin Vichian. And this just is a goal that shows you how good it is at striking. The early one, the PK, that, that's an easy one. You're talking about 25, 30 yards out. Look at the bend on that going away from the keeper, Bowers, going the right way. The ball just kept running away from him, though. An absolute beauty for Martin Vichian, who now posts a brace in back-to-back -back games. His fifth brace at Carolina, his eighth brace as a college player. Four goals already on the season. Five goals now, because he's got two today. He had 10 last year. I think he he's can, halfway there. Yeah, he can push for 15, 20 this season. I'm not the best at math, Kyle, but I know that five is half a 10. <laughs> and five in four games is really good. Check out the speed from Michael Dunn, Portland Timbers Academy product, 47 and one. 
One of those players making his college debut tonight. Side flag was up. So we reached the final minute this evening. Two first half goals for the Tar Heels, both of them off corners. Carolina opens the floodgates with four in the second half to post their most. Trying to get things worked out offensively after a slow start in that department to this year. A night like this against a team that on paper you're clearly better than. This, this was a, a needed performance for Carlos Samuano's team, especially knowing that Hilly and Vichian are going to walk away from tonight with braces. Yeah, and coming off of the way that they won last game, which was three goals, that's great, but they came late in the game. We wanted a different outlook. As ETSU had a chance to get one, that was Nainheish that took the shot, just parried away by Cordes. A really late Same. chance. Yeah. Preserves the shutout. Maybe one last push here, and the night will come to a close. So North Carolina does win it, 6 nothing. two in the first half, four in the second half. Braces for two different players in Vichian and Hilly. Just an impressive performance to tie up that thought.